It is time for the Edward Jones Chat and Cage. I'm Scott Braun. This show is all about you, the fans, because you get to ask the questions to today's guest, Marlins outfielder, Lewis Brinson. And remember, there's two ways to ask a question. You can either click the button below and sign up or sign in for your chance to ask that question live, or you tweet us the questions using the hashtag Chatting Cage, and I will ask your questions live on the show, which we're going to do right now. Let's bring in Lewis Brinson to the Edward Jones Chat and Cage. Lewis, how are you doing in this final week of the regular season? Good, good. Can't complain, man. Enjoying the uh, final week of baseball here. All right, so let's get to it. Let's go first to the Twitter questions, and we'll start with one from Victoria. What music do you listen to before games to pump yourself up? This is perfect timing as we're, what, a couple hours from game time. Right. Um, I don't really listen to music personally, like on my headphones, but uh, there's always like Spanish music. There's always like different kind of music going on in the clubhouse. But if I did listen to music, it'd probably be, you know, rap, hip hop and R&B, um, kind of a variety of stuff before a game. So nothing at all before the game on game day. You never have anything personally going for you or even say if you're no. driving in Miami to the park. Um, if OK, so if I'm driving to Miami in the, uh, to the park, maybe some. Uh, I don't know, uh, T.I., mixture of T.I., Chris Brown, um, who's a new Amigos, Drake, you know, stuff like that. There we go. I love it. Okay, so you're in Washington, D.C. right now, so this is a good one for number right. two from Ron. What's your favorite ballpark to visit on the road? Uh, I'd probably say Atlanta right now. Uh, I got a couple. Um, L.A. was nice. That was awesome when I first came out, went out there. Love Arizona, love Chase Field, great ballpark, but uh, obviously ballpark that I go visit um, a good amount of times in the year, Atlanta, you know, that beautiful uh, SunTrust Park, it's awesome, um, and Atlanta is just a great city, so I like going to Atlanta. That one's on my list. I have not been down there yet. Okay. I want to get to Atlanta very soon. Okay, let's bring in a question from a fan live on the Edward Jones chatting cage. What's your name? What's your question for Lewis Brinson? Hi, it's Casey. Uh, Lewis, I was wondering, who's the toughest pitcher you faced this season? Ah, uh, tougher, toughest. I mean, in the big leagues, man, there's a lot of tough ones. But um, uh, probably uh, Strasburg, guy we faced last night. Um, obviously Scherzer, guy we're facing tonight. Um, you know, obviously both in our division. Um, two really tough pitchers, Degrom, um, another another great, you know, great pitcher in our division. Um, I'd probably say, you know, Strasburg's gave me, uh, you know, a run for my money this season. It's a tough week for you, Lewis. Strasburg last night, Scherzer tonight? <laughs> yeah, no, we're going to have to battle. We're just going to have to battle. It's all good. That's right. Finish strong. Okay, let's get another Twitter question. This one from Tom. With your rookie season almost behind you, what are your goals for this offseason and 2019? Uh, just to contribute more. Um, get stronger in the offseason. Uh, continue to work on my foundation hitting. Um, just to contribute to us winning more. Uh, that's what the name of the game of uh, up, the, up here in the big leagues is winning. you got to win every day, go, go out there, compete every day. So I'm going to get stronger, I'm going to get faster, I'm going to get smarter as a hitter. Um, obviously, uh, you know, play defense the way I know how to and um, just, you know, work hard in the offseason. Um, take some time off, kind of relax, but, you know, get ready for next year as soon as it's time to go. I don't know about you, but when I hit the final week of the regular season, I start to do reminiscing. I'm thinking back to all the big moments during the year. So all-star game, right. draft, et cetera, right, opening day. So I like this next question from Nathan. What was your reaction once you knew you made the roster at the start of the season? Oh, started jumping. Um, they called me in the <laughs> office last day, very, very last day of spring training. They waited it out, um, you know, called me in the office and, you know, kind of started the whole like, ah, oh, you had a good spring, but, and, you know, Donnie told me I made the roster. Uh, so it's an accomplishment, man. It's awesome. You make your first opening day roster. Um, you know, my rookie year, 24 years old, you know, making my first opening roster at home um, against our four team, you know, I grew up loving and watching. So it was a dream come true, literally. And I want to ask you more about that playing down in Florida for the Marlins. We'll get to that soon with some more Twitter questions. Let's bring in another fan at the moment here. It's the Edward Jones chatting cage. And it is Lewis Brinson. And your question for Lewis is what and what's your name? Hey, Lewis. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name's Derek. I'm a fan and I'm currently living in the Washington, D.C. area. Um, Lewis, my question for you is what is one thing that you loved about playing in Miami this year? And what's um, one thing that you're looking forward to next year? First of all, I love that hat, man. <laughs> love that yeah. hat. Love that hat. I like that hat. But um, Deal is real, no, man. Uh, play, I, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but playing at home. Obviously, I'm from Fort Lauderdale, 35, 40 minutes up the road. So I get to play in front of my mom um, all the time when I'm at home. 
Um, she doesn't have to come travel to see me play. Uh, obviously, all the coaches and fans and friends, you know, that I grew up, um, you know, helped me kind of get to this point in my life. Um, you know, that's the best thing. And obviously, it's South Florida. It's awesome. Uh, the vibe around the ballpark and, you know, around, around the city is awesome. So that was one thing, you know, I love playing about uh, playing at home and uh, playing in Miami. And then um, one thing I'm looking forward to next year is just, again, just continuing that winning atmosphere uh, that we're trying to build here and, um, you know, continue to play with the teammates that I have right now and uh, continue to get better. And that's a hat that you grew up uh, looking at and wearing, I'm sure, too. So oh, yeah. here's your EDJ question of the day. What has it meant to play for the team you grew up supporting, being from Coral Springs, Florida, and then now playing for the Miami Marlins? Oh, man, dream come true. Uh, you know, that's all I can say is a dream come true. Playing for the team that you grew up watching and loving and, you know, following and, and uh, kind of being a part of, you know, being a part of my life. Uh, you know, Marlins baseball, Florida Marlins baseball was part of my life. I uh, wake up and check the box score from last night if I didn't see the game. Um, you know, obviously watching them win the World Series in 2003, that was awesome for me. Um, you know, I know our owner, Derek Jeter, remembers that very well. So, you know, we bring <laughs> that up from time to time. So, uh, but no, it, it, it's awesome, man. Literally a dream come true for me to play for my hometown team. I used to tell my mom all the time, you know, I want to grow up to be a professional baseball player, put you in a house, get you a car, and uh, I want to play for the Florida Marlins. Uh, now the Miami Marlins, but it's, you know, same thing. It's, like I said, it's a dream come true. The Edward Jones chatting cage with Lewis Brinson continues. So how about this question on Twitter from Sammy? Living in Miami, you get to meet a lot of celebrities. Who is the coolest person you have met in South Beach? Uh, Shaq. Shaq Ooh. came to the ballpark, man. That guy's huge. <laughs> huge. So, uh, you know, he was cool. He came through the, through the clubhouse, uh, played some one-on-one -on -one in our little basketball hoop in the clubhouse with Martin, uh, dunked on him pretty well. Um, you know, but no, it was awesome. He was a, probably the coolest guy. You know, you've never, I've never been that close to somebody that big, especially Shaq. He played for the Heat for a little bit, won, won our, uh, our first championship in 2006. So, you know, it's great to meet him. Same here. I covered him down in Miami when he was with the Heat, and he's really the only person ever that physically I was like, wow. I mean, larger than life, right? And you've been around people probably a similar height, right? I've covered other players in the <laughs> NBA, but Shaq is just different, isn't he? No, oh, it's just a different it's, – it's literally like a different human – like different human being. He's a human yeah. being, but it just, it's just towers over everybody. He's got a duck to come in our clubhouse. <laughs> uh, I'm sure he's got a duck to go everywhere else. He's just a very big person. So, yeah. He's a modern-day Goliath. Okay, so then on yeah. meeting people, let's go through uh, your idol here, actually, Juan Pierre from Jacob. People know about this. What was it like when you got to meet Juan Pierre? And I know you wear number nine to honor him, right? Yeah, no, it was awesome to meet him. Um, pretty much every home series, he comes maybe once or twice, uh, you know, during the home series, just to check in, just to, you know, give us base running notes um, on the pitchers or the pitchers we're facing that, that series. Um, but it's awesome to, you know, like I say, he grew up, I grew up watching him. He was my idol. I'd always want to sit in center field, so he'd throw me a ball um, just to kind of get his attention. But to be around him every day, um, especially in spring training, he was there pretty much every day. And just get to pick his brain, you know, somebody that's won a World Series, somebody that's stolen, you know, 50 bases in a season, um, somebody that's played, you know, my position, um, just somebody that I grew up loving and watching. Um, you know, it's awesome to get to pick his brain every day. That's really cool. So now here's a fan who wants to ask you a question. What's your name? What's your question for Lewis Brinson? What's up, Lewis? I'm Andrew. And I know there's a lot of great places to go to eat in Miami, so I got to know what's your favorite place to have some, uh, some food down there. Ah, uh, man, that's tough. That's a tough question. That's a tough question. As you know, there's plenty of places to go eat in Miami. Um, probably Komodo, um, yeah. like a sushi kind of, I, I don't know what it's mixed with, but it's just everything that comes out of that kitchen is amazing. So, uh, you know, I usually get uh, like dumplings or um, I think they have like some kind of meat dumplings and then all kind of sushi and just the appetizers and desserts, everything that comes out of the kitchen is amazing. So, and the atmosphere is great. Um, you know, they're beautiful people, obviously, in Miami. Just the atmosphere is great. Um, you know, kind of dim the lights a little bit. And just the, the whole, uh, you know, aura of the place is awesome. You're a lucky guy down there. It's a pretty awesome city <laughs> to be in Miami. I lived there for quite yeah. some time, too. Okay, how about this question Definitely. from Julia on Twitter? There are a lot of young baseball fans that look up to you. What advice would you give them? Never take no for an answer. Um, that's something that my mom... Uh, my dad, all my family um, that has, uh, you know, supported me and grew up uh, watching me play 
um, has instilled in me from, you know, the day I started playing baseball, I was old enough to understand what they were talking about. You know, never take no for an answer. Um, never, you know, never, obviously never give up. That's a cliche thing, but just never th take no, uh, take no for an answer. Uh, my mom used to post on my room in my, uh, like on my mirror before I leave, uh, do what you have to do so you can do what you want to do. So I remember that every day of my life, um, you know, just talk to her and, and, and just kind of remember that anytime I think about that, I hear her voice. Um, but the, uh, the one thing I give to young fans or, you know, kids that want to play or even kids that don't want to play, just want to do something with their lives and, you know, get to, you know, a better place in their life. Just don't take no for an answer. Um, obviously it's, it's tough for, it's tough for me to explain. I'm in the big leagues, you know, I'm, you know, I, I'm living out my dream, but it wasn't the easiest. Obviously this year hasn't been the easiest. Um, but you know, it never was the easiest. I've never been given anything. I've always had to work for everything. So, you know, just never take no for an answer. Never let anybody, you know, tell you can't do something. Um, cause if you let them, you know, it'll, it'll ultimately come true. So if you, you ultimately, um, you know, believe in yourself, believe in your dreams, whatever that may be, if it's baseball, if it's football, basketball, anything, just never take no for an answer. That's strong. Do you still have the poster? I do. I do. Yeah. It's still, it, I, I remember it. It's in my phone, in my notes, but it's still, when I go visit my mom on Sunday dinner, I have Sunday dinner with my mom anytime I can. It's still in my room in my, uh, you know, on that mirror. It says, uh, uh, do what you want, do what you have to do so you can do what you want to do. That's great. You have to keep that forever. Uh, a little more oh, time yeah. now on the Edward Jones Chatting Cage with Lewis Brinson. One more Twitter question. This one from Martin. Let's get a little big picture on the team here. Martin says, what do you enjoy about having such a young group of teammates in Miami? I mean, everybody can relate to you. Um, you know, I'm probably the third or fourth youngest on the team. I'm not sure, but um, we obviously have a lot of young, hungry guys. Their first year, first, you know, full season in the big leagues. Um, you just have a hungry team. Uh, guys that, you know, want to be up here, want an opportunity to prove what they can do. Um, you know, whether that's, you know, whether, it, it, you know, any position on the field. Um, but, you know, it's just, it's just nice to have guys that, uh, you know, can relate to you. Um, obviously, you have a mixture of veterans. Uh, Martin, Miguel Rojas, uh, JT Remuto, uh Obviously, they're gone now, Cameron Maven, Justin Bohr. But when they were here, they were great. They, you know, offered the best advice to me and everybody in that clubhouse. Um, you know, just to carry yourself, how to carry yourself, carry yourself as a professional. Obviously, being the first year in the big leagues, we have a lot of rookies, which means we have a lot of hazing. We have a lot of stuff that, you know, um, you know, has to be done as a rookie. But, you know, it's, you're in the big leagues. I'll do whatever, you know, do whatever it takes to stay up here and get the respect from your teammates. So. Um, but it's awesome. You have a lot of guys that are in your shoes um, going through their first big league season or getting their first uh, big league call up. We've had a lot of that just this year. So it's awesome. OK, so then last question from me. What did the rookies have to do? Did you guys have to dress up? Uh, I'm sure we will. Not oh, yet. Not yet. But, uh, not yet. Not yet. I'm sure we will, though, um, with two series left. I'm sure we will. I'm not sure what. Don't ask me what. I'm not sure. So <laughs> You're not um, you know, we'll see. I'm sure. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it'll be fun. Um, but, the, they, you know, they just regular rookie stuff, man. We just got to cater to the veterans. <laughs> I bet you they're waiting for the dress-up part or something like that until you get to New York City to take on the Mets for yeah. the final series because that's oh, where you'll have man, a lot of yeah. fun in Manhattan. Lewis, thank you yeah. so much. This was really fun. We appreciate you taking the time to join us today on the Edwards Jones Chatting Cage. All right, guys. Thanks, Scott. Appreciate it. All right. We'll talk soon. Lewis Brinson with us. And thank you, fans, for joining us and making this show go. Keep it locked right here at MLB.com for future Edward Jones chatting cages. I'm Scott Braun. See you next time.